Hi everyone, my name is Matthew and I'm back with a new tutorial. So in this video I'm going to show you how I'm using the uh, model from IKEA, so it's a laptop stand. It's very cheap, it's around 4 euros and I chose this topic because you can buy it like probably everywhere in the world. So if you want to copy this tutorial, uh, you should be able to do it. So I bought it for 4 euros and I'll be using this to make a mold from it and then do a resin infusion in this video. Uh, to make uh, a carbon fiber laptop stand. So I'm using some fluid boards to make the base plate and flanges around the piece because I want to have some flanges to be able to add some tacky tape and so on. Like you can see here, I'm using the direction in my favor. So um, you have like channels all the way through the plates and if you use them in the right direction you'll be able to bend them very easily so i'm using some double-sided tape here to stick the flanges on you could also use some hot glue or, or something like that like you can see the hot glue gun in the background because i thought i would need it but with double-sided tape it was enough so i'm using the fluid board for the sides and then i'm just trimming everything off uh, to have like a nice transition between the base plate and the flanges around the parts. So everything is easy to cut with a Stanley knife. Just use a sharp knife uh, to have some nice cuts and so on. Um, because it's, it's, it's better to, to work that way. So I'm just taping everything down and then everything should be okay. So I'm just uh, in need of some um, gap filling because there would be some undercut. So if I would make the mold without uh, the filleting wax, you would have some undercut and you wouldn't be able to remove the part from the mold. So that's why there's some um, modeling clay all the, way, all the way around. And it's also like to have a nice transition and to avoid the gel coat that will be added later on. Uh, dripping all the way through uh, the gaps of the mold. So here I'm just preparing everything. So in the previous shot I waxed the mold with some mold release. So I'm using the chemical release agent from uh, Easy Composites like always because I'm pretty happy about it. You could also use some wax. Uh, you have Meguiar's wax and so on. But I'm pretty happy with the chemical release agent I'm using here. So here I'm preparing everything for the gel coat. So you need a scale, a cup, a brush, um, mixing stick, some Mac P hardener, uh, because this will react with the Mac P hardener. So it will harden thanks to that. So I'm showing you here, I'm mixing um, 2%. So that's around five grams to the 250 grams of shell coats that I'm mixing right here. So make sure you scrape all the the edges of the cup as well to ensure you don't have unmixed resin. Then it's like pretty easy, it's just like painting it on. Um, just try to avoid to have some air under the gel coat, but normally it's, it's pretty easy to do it. Here I'm using uh, a 300 grams square meter, uh, no this is a 100 gram square meter um, chop strand, so fiberglass, to add the first two layers um, using this mold making technique. So I'm using the uni mold uh, technique because I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. Zero shrink, it can go to high temperatures. Because you will see in later videos on my channel, I'll be using the same mold to make a pre-break part. So I'm just mixing, like I have like a ratio, if you use 250 grams of gel coat, you will need around 250 grams of uh, coupling coats with the 100 grams uh, chopped strands. So that's like my basic rule of um, how I work with the amounts. And it's mostly like, I think it's experience. Uh, while making a lot of molds, you will uh, know how much. But like, if you want to know here, it was 250 grams. It was applied with a brush and then degassed with a roller to remove any air bubbles and so on that were trapped under the uh, chop strands. So here I'm just cutting uh, a clean edge to start with because I want to cut some squares here and I'm just measuring everything out. For this part, um, it was 44 or around 50 centimeters by 50 to make the first two layers. So this is uh, a 400 gram square meter, so this is a bit more heavy 
uh, but this will be used to make the backing of the mold. So this is the tooling resin, it's much thicker. So one liter of this won't be the same in weight. So uh, take count of that because it's in kilogram and not in liters on the cup. Um, so you will see it has like a, a milky, like a brown milky color, but you can add some pigments because this can be pretty cool if you want to have like your own way of making molds or like a signature signature uh, color of your molds uh, you can color them with some pigments uh, so i've chose red here because lenovo is working with red and black and it thinks it's it's fitted quite well that way so um, then it's just a matter of brushing everything on you cannot use too much resin on the first layer because everything will be absorbed uh, all the way through so a rule of thumb is using four layers of the four 400 gram square meter and you will use around four times the amount of the coupling coat. So I'm using around 750, 800 grams here. Uh, you can be quite generous with the amount of resin uh, to have a good mold. So uh, this is the demolding. Then you can just remove everything uh, that was still in the mold. So this is the filleting wax. I'm just able to remove and scrape off at the ends. And if you want to, you could even reuse it uh, I'm mostly keeping it apart to use on, on smaller projects and so on after I've used it once. So, um, and just like in the video it's not pretty clear but it's it has some curing time of around 24 hours to be fully cured so take count of that. Um, and then it's, it's fully hardened and you're able to cut everything down. So I'm using a jigsaw here with um, a diamond blade, uh, it's a permagrit uh, blade. Uh, to cut everything, uh, all the sides like from the mold and so on. Then once you have everything cut, you can just go to some detailing work. Um, I'm just sanding everything clean because the flute board will leave some marks. I'm sanding a bit through the gel coats on the sides, but that not, that's not that important. If you want to avoid that, you can add two layers of gel coats in the begin beginning of the video instead of one. And then it's just a matter of cutting down all the carbon fiber that will be laid into the mold. Uh, so everything is put dry in the mold because this is uh, the technique of using resin infusion. So the resin will be added later on uh, under vacuum. I'm just using some fusion fix. Uh, I would like recommend use the least as possible because it will leave some marks or pinholes um, but if you're just like pretty careful with the use of it it's it's very good um, it's a very good spray to use to keep some things in place and there's just the peel ply the infusion mesh on top and then it's time for the vacuum bag so i'm taking my time to look for leaks uh, put everything tightly against the mold and this bag should be like completely under vacuum so you have no chance of error you may not have any leaks or the entire process uh, will fail later on so i'm using the infusion resin here i'm always like most of the times i would say like 95 percent i'm using the slow hardener so if you're ordering i would highly recommend you to buy um the infusion resin with the slow hardener so here I'm mixing it, it's 100 by 30 in mixing ratio. I, I mixed 300 grams of A and 90 grams of B here to infuse this part. So just to give you a reference, um, this is how much you will need. So everything is flowing all the way through the molds, through the infusion mesh, and then it's all the way to the top. So I wanted to include this little video because I always keep some spare silicon molds. If I have some leftovers, I can use it to pour some uh, some of these YouTube buttons instead of having a cup full of epoxy resin. So after around two days, uh, Easy Composites will say it's around 24 hours. I mostly wait 48 hours just to be sure it's fully cured. But then you're able to remove everything and thanks to the peel ply, you can remove the infusion mesh and the vacuum bag that is laying on top. So this is a result, like it's pinhole free, but it's still like out of mold look. So it's a bit dull, but I don't really care about this because everything will be sanded uh, in a further stage and uh, clear coated at the end, like most of my parts. 
So uh, the clear coat will make it UV resistant and give it like a, a brighter shine uh, through your carbon fiber. So here is everything still with the flanges. Um, so these will be trimmed off um, using a Dremel tool and a permagrid uh, rotary disc. So um, this can be like pretty scary for the first time if you're cutting pieces, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. And then you can just do some detailing work because I always leave like one milli millimeter or something and just sand everything uh, flat against the mold. So this is the result of the laptop sensor and I made two of these and I think Lenovo will announce something later on on their Facebook page about how everything will go for the second one. So I hope you like this video and if you want to see more just subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a look at my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.